Good morning and welcome to our service as the sound of our church bells here at Potts Ridley fades away. Sadly, recorded, the bells have fallen silent just as our church building stands empty. And of course we do, like any family or group of friends, very much miss meeting together physically at this time. But as a church family, as a church congregation, uh, we're nonetheless united, united by the Spirit of Christ, by our faith in him, and united together now as we worship. And of course, one very good thing about worshipping in this way is that it's lovely to be able to welcome folk to join us in worship who wouldn't normally be able to be with us on a Sunday morning up the road in St Christopher's Church. And so whether you join us uh, from Pottsrigley, Bollington, or around the Macclesfield area, or from much further afield, whether you're watching this live as I'm uh, speaking, or whether you're watching it as a, a recording later, uh, we welcome you very warmly. And we begin our service by declaring our common faith in our risen Lord. Would you respond to me with the words printed in yellow? Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, if there is one word which perhaps sums up the mood uh, in our country and across the world at the moment, uh, there's probably a lot of words, but one word would be uncertainty. And in these uncertain times, it's good to be certain of one thing, and that is of God's love and faithfulness. And we're going to celebrate that in our first hymn. It happens to be, uh, as I often say when I introduce this hymn, my wife Kim's favourite hymn too. So please uh, join or uh, either out loud with your voice or just in your heart as we have our first hymn. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes. 
pardon for sin and a peace that endures. We're going to claim that promise of pardon, of forgiveness for our sins now, won for us by Jesus' death on the cross and confirmed by his resurrection from the dead. Would you join with me by responding in the with the words printed in yellow? Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so we hear God's words of forgiveness. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, it's time for a Bible reading now, and it's going to be read by one of our members, Mike Akerman. And Mike's going to read a, a slightly longer than usual reading, but it's a wonderful story of something that happened on the first Easter day. The story we sometimes call the road to Emmaus. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem, talking with each other about all these things that had happened. As they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, whilst he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Good morning. Normally, we say recognising birthdays for our family services, but it came to our attention that two of our younger church family members had birthdays this week. We had James Phillips, who was two, and Ethan Davis, 
was 12, both on Tuesday. I thought you might like to see a picture of James enjoying his special lockdown birthday day. And we can't forget happy birthday shout outs to both Audrey and Tess, who also celebrated their birthdays this week. Hope you both had a good day. And today we wish Tabby a happy birthday and Ted Lofthouse celebrates his 13th birthday too. Wow, a teenager, how did that happen? Happy birthday to you all. As many of you will know, most weeks our junior church share a story from the Bible. At the moment, we're recording it and sending it out so that they can watch it from the comfort of their own homes. Last week, we viewed Jesus is Risen, Appearance to Mary Magdalene. And in response to it, Grace and Finn have sent this fabulous model, which I thought you might enjoy seeing, because I certainly did. You can see in it the empty tomb, the angel and a very green cross. Thank you both so much. We do love sharing in the creative feedback we get to our stories, so do keep it coming in. And now it's time for our second hymn. We're so blessed in our church family to have our own musicians play and record for us. So let's join Sheila and David as we sing let there be love shared among us. Well, a little earlier, Mike read to us that story from Luke's Gospel. And I'd like to share some reflections on that story with you now. The account we, we heard just, heard now, just now of the two of friends, the two friends meeting, Jesus. meeting Jesus on the road to Emmaus would make a great screenplay. Dramatic tension is built into this story. As the friends walk along, away from Jerusalem, they are joined by a stranger. And we know, but they don't, that the stranger is none other than Jesus himself, who that very day has risen from the dead. So the big question in our minds is, when will we have the big reveal? When will he make himself known to them? And of course, that dramatic climax does finally take place that evening as they sit round the supper table and they suddenly know him as he breaks the bread for their meal. And what a moment it is, that joyful reunion with the Lord and friend whom they thought was dead and gone forever. But Luke, who wrote this account, wasn't writing a screenplay. And Jesus wasn't motivated by the wish to achieve dramatic effect either. So then why? Why didn't he reveal himself as soon as he met them on the road? Hi, fellas, it's me. Everything's okay. The nightmare is over. Why did he keep them waiting until the evening 
to bring an end to their anguish and loss. And this matters because there is something happening here which has been repeated countless times since. Just as at that supper table there is the joyous encounter with the risen Lord, so ever since people have been meeting with Jesus, have, like Cleopas and his friend, finally recognised that it is he who has been with them all along on their journey, that he is alive, that he is real, and that therefore there is hope, there is peace, there is meaning. It's not only first century, but also 21st century people who can have a real encounter with the risen Lord. So what does this story tell us about that encounter? Well, it tells us that Jesus meets us where we are. He does this quite literally with these two friends, of course. He comes and joins them on their seven mile walk to Emmaus. But he also meets them where they are in their journey of grief, shock and pain. He knows that they will not be able to accept straight away that it is he who is with them. There is unfinished business in their broken hearts. And so, like any sensitive person, Jesus first just listens. Twice he asks those open questions, questions which give a person permission to unburden themselves to a listening ear. And the floodgates open. It must have felt good to tell this sensitive, listening stranger all that was pent up in their hearts following the horrors of Jesus' betrayal, trial, torture and death. That is what they need at this moment. And so that is where Jesus meets them. I wonder, what is the point of need in your life where Jesus wants to meet with you? Notice too where he takes them next. Just as their broken hearts start to heal, so Jesus now brings clarity and understanding to their confused and scrambled minds. He turns the conversation round to the scriptures, which they already know well, and reshapes their concept of what has taken place. Far from being a terrible calamity, he says, his death was all there in the scriptures, all part of God's plan. How often I have found that just turning to the scriptures, just opening the Bible and reading it, puts things in the right perspective because it gives me God's perspective. I hope you found that too. And so, when they arrive at the house in Emmaus and persuade this stranger to stay there for the night, the scene is set for that dramatic climax. But even here, it doesn't go according to my idea for the screenplay, the predicted happy ending, they finally recognise him, yes, but what follows? A joyous reunion, hoax and backslapping, drinking and talking and laughing late into the night? No, Jesus goes, he leaves. Luke says, he vanished from their sight. You see, this is not a happy ending because it's not an ending at all. It's a beginning. A new story is about to be written. A story of lives of a world transformed by the power and love of the risen Lord. And the exciting thing for these two is that they, healed, restored and renewed by Jesus as they are, are going to be part of that story. And you can be too. Thank you, David. Whether or not we can meet together, we are still joined with one another with a shared faith in God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. 
Let us declare our faith together. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're going to turn to a time of prayer now. And today our prayers are led by Celia and Toby Fraser. Thank you, Celia and Toby. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you today. And though we are not gathered together in one place, we are still gathered together in your name and know that you are with each and every one of us, wherever we may be, as we bring our prayers before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us through another week of lockdown. Whilst this present time has difficulties for many of us, yet we know you walk beside us and nothing can separate us from your love, neither our fears for today nor our worries for tomorrow. We seek to praise you, Lord, in every situation. Thank you for the chance we now have to curtail the hustle and bustle of our daily lives, to be still and to rest in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for our church leaders, both here at Potstrigley and across the nation, as they seek to spiritually lead their flock at a time of hardship and difficulty. We pray for their strength and health, both physical and spiritual. Thank you for the skills and dedication of those who support them within the church family, particularly those at our own church who have worked so tirelessly to bring virtual services out into the community, so that your word, O Lord, continues to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray that many churches will be able to use and access similar facilities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you our children and young people. We pray that they may all be able to continue their learning journey, to access and use educational facilities. And we pray for those teachers and support workers who make this possible. Lord, grant them patience, insight, compassion and perseverance as they seek to teach, inspire and shape younger minds. We pray in particular for those who have had important exams disrupted and who perhaps as a result are now unsure of their future or career path. Lord, let this be an opportunity for positive re-evaluation. In the words of Archbishop Oscar Romero, that they may aspire to not have more, but to be more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our government and those in positions of power and responsibility, that they may seek you in difficult decisions they have to make for the safety of our nation. Guide and guard their hearts and minds and breathe your spirit of love, peace, joy and unity into all policy and procedure. We bring to you the needs of all countries around the world. Lord, for once we are united as we seek to fight the current pandemic, let the lessons we learn here not be temporary, but work to bring us closer together, to have a better understanding of each other, to make us more compassionate and attuned to each other's needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our missionary partners of Fazakalis in Malawi and the Macleans in Thailand. May they continue to stand in your armour as they seek to bring the word to the nations. We pray for their protection from evil, for provision for their daily needs, for solid family bonds, for health and well-being and for strong relationships with their co-workers. We pray their hearts are encouraged and strengthened and grant them wisdom in all they do to make good decisions in their personal lives as well as their ministries. We know, Lord, that they depend on others for their financial support. Grant us the ability to continue to do our bit as a church and assist their needs, particularly during this time of financial hardship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, Lord, those who are sick or who are suffering in body or mind. We take a moment now, Lord, to present to you those amongst our family and friends who are in this situation and for whom we seek comfort, relief and healing. 
We pray for the NHS and for all who work within it and for it. We pray for protection and strength for our medical workers as they tend to the sick. We pray also for those who have recently passed away and thank you, Lord, that through your Son, you have promised that you are the resurrection and the life and those who believe in you shall have eternal life. We remember their families and loved ones who grieve their loss. We bring to you in particular the family of Michael Sharpley and we have been asked this week to remember Audrey, the aunt of John Rose, who was born and raised in Potshrigley. Accept these prayers, merciful Lord, in the name of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour Jesus taught us, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our collect for today the third Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we come almost to the end of our service. Um, I do hope that in the week that lies ahead, uh, you and your loved ones will know God's blessing uh, in all that you have in store. And um, can I remind you that uh, we've tried to find ways of uh, keeping in touch as a church family uh, and uh, through our WhatsApp group, uh, our Facebook group as well, and um, in uh, other ways, but uh, such as ringing each other up and uh, do encourage everyone to continue to stay in touch. If you'd like to be in touch and you aren't, please uh, contact me. You can see my details on the website. Um, tonight, many of us will light a candle again at eight o'clock in a window as a sign of hope uh, for the world around us. And uh, on Tuesday, uh, we'll set a time aside from seven till 7.45 to pray for the needs of the world. And I hope you can set that time aside too and pray with us. Um, talking about keeping in touch, uh, we still have our monthly parish magazine, Hot Pot, which can be uh, read on our website. The April edition is still there. The May one will be appearing very shortly. So we come to our final hymn once again, accompanied by David and Sheila Garton and you at home, I hope, providing the voice. It's an old hymn, but one that uh, has a very important message for us to celebrate. We sing, I do not know what lies ahead.
Well, I do thank you for joining together in worship this morning. And uh, please do remind your friends who perhaps can't view it live as, uh, as you have, that this, exactly the same service can be viewed via our website. It will be available uh, quite soon on the uh, relevant page in our website and they can join in worship too uh, by watching the, it as a video. So we close with a blessing and some words to send each other on our way. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.